So Zoe and I recorded a whole load of mini interviews at the MVP Summit, and we thought rather than build those into a few larger episodes, we would release those to you in short little snippets like this. So enjoy a set of our interviews live from Seattle with various people from Microsoft and MVPs. Hope you enjoy them. Hi, this is Zoe and I'm at MVP Summit in Seattle. I've been joined today by Mark. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Mark Anderson and I was just walking by peacefully and was snagged, but I'm happy to sit down with you. Fantastic. So we'd love to get your honest view of Copilot and that could be any of the Copilots. So first of all, what does Copilot mean to you? Um, it's it's certainly the drumbeat of Microsoft these days. This is somebody was joking. It's the Copilot company now. Um, I think it's it's a promising set of technologies. I'm waiting to see how it all plays out. I think it's gonna has the potential for uh, revolutionizing the way people work together and on their own work. But we have to sort of see how it plays because I think there's a lot of a lot of change that people are going to have to go through to really be able to take advantage of these technologies. We're not all techies. We're, yeah. we're people with all kinds of viewpoints and skills and whatever. So, um, you know, what, what one assumes from the technology trenches is not always what happens in the real world. Yeah, I think I think that's a really important point because what, one of the things we've seen is that that choice to use Copilot is highly personal. It's mm. it's discretionary. You don't have to use it, and you can just work how you always have. Yeah. And the way that we all work, the habits, the the work, the practices, uh, how we manage our productivity, it's personal to each of us. So what that means is that each person has to put the work in to build that Copilot muscle, right. and we know that change enablement's hard. We know it's usually the thing that's cut out of projects and seen as optional. And, and for me, it's not optional if we're going to actually realize the potential of Copilot. Mm. So what are your experiences with Copilot that you feel have made a difference to you? To me so far, it's actually sort of been a toy. I mean, it's, hey, let me try asking it this. And, and I think uh, I would say that it gives me answers that I don't find satisfying often enough that it's not something I turn to yet. I do use GitHub Copilot. Um, I write a lot of PowerShell. So I use GitHub Copilot, it's, it's on, and it makes suggestions to me. And I would say that you know, two, out of, two or three out of 10 times, it's actually right on the money. Mm. And the rest of the time, it's, eh, it's not hallucinating. It's just telling me things that aren't quite right. Yeah. And so, again, that's part of my, you know, I, I'm a natural skeptic. But in practice, I've also seen that it's, it, it, it requires me to do extra thinking if I ask it a question as opposed to solving my problem. It's giving you extra cognitive load rather yeah, than Yeah, in a it sense. Yeah, yeah, it's making me almost work harder because it's, I think it's harder to just, it's just like searching on the web. You can find things that match your search. But are they right? Yeah. And you have to figure that out in the context of anything you're doing, yeah. any research that you're doing. I think with GitHub Copilot as well, I've seen a lot of people talk about how this might help junior developers. But that example that you gave where it's only right two or three times out of ten, yeah. that's worrying for junior developers because yeah. they might not have the experience to actually know that it's not right. I think where it's been, it, it's interesting because I think it's most useful in areas where you have expertise, mm -hmm. where you can discern whether or not it's right. If I use Copilot to find out about the iron smelting process, I don't know anything about the iron smelting process. So is slag really something that comes out of that process or is it just telling me something that makes mm -hmm. no sense? So it, the, the concept that you know, just like it, to me, it's just like search. You can always find something, but that doesn't mean it's the right thing to find. And Copilot, so far, is the same thing. Mm. It's it's absolutely going to improve. I mean, I think that that's something we can all agree on. It's sort of a baby product. Yeah, at this point. really early. Um, you know, it has a couple. It's it's starting to smile at us a little bit, <laughs> coos. So you know, we think it's pretty cute. Um, but we'll have to see how it grows. Yeah, perfect. Um, is there anything that you're worried about? Oh, yes, many, <laughs> many things. Um, 
You know, it's interesting. I've, I've, we've seen some t- statistics this week, and I, I'm always very careful. I don't remember which ones I'm allowed to know and which ones I'm not allowed to, or at least say out loud. Um, for example, there's a high percentage of code that's being committed to GitHub that is AI generated. That just opens a whole can of worms to me. You know, how inefficient is that? Does that inefficiency matter? Is that code the best code that could do that thing? Mm. Um, so that makes me think about things. And, I, and, you know, we've already sort of touched on some of my other concerns. You know, if, if, is what Copilot is saying that you, is, is what it's giving you something that you actually should take? Mm-hmm. Or is it actually going to cause you oh, bigger problems? You know, if Alaska Air had asked Copilot, should we have closed that door more tightly? And it said no. Well, that's not so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so I, I, I think like like I'm like I've been saying, you know, it's it's let's see how it plays out. But I actually wrote a blog post last week or the week before. Um, you know, this is one of many sort of knowledge management uh, or technology advance, advances that Microsoft has come along and said, this is going to solve everything. And then they pivot and use something else to solve everything. So there's also that sort of longevity and, you know, is this the flavor of the month? I don't think so, but I also like to wait until I can see version three of things until yeah. I really believe that that they're the thing that they're supposed to be. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, it's only, what, a year or two since Metaverse was the flavor of the year. Oh, but yeah, that, I, that oh, how do we live without that? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so last question, what are you most excited about or what are you hoping to see next? I, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to see some real applications of people solving specific problems. I mean, we, we're, hearing, we're hearing some interesting um, what-if scenarios, you know, we're, and, and this, this stuff demos really well. Um, look, you can ask it this question that we already know we've asked before and we get an answer that seems pretty good. But, uh, you know, how, how reliable is it? How can it be built into work processes? And, and uh, you know, it, it, my knowledge management roots go way back. So one of, the, one of the things that we always struggled with with knowledge management is what's the, what's the ROI? And you can't really, you can't prove it very early. Yeah, it's you hard to quantify, isn't it? Yeah, and you can't do that with Copilot yeah. really easily either. Yes, it told me some things, but did it actually make that thing I was trying to do happen faster and better? Or did it just take me on a little diversion? So I think we'll have to see how those anecdotes come out. We'll have to see... Um, what kind of stories people are telling, not just white papers, not the formalized ROI stuff. I mean, I'm willing to hear good anecdotes and, mm. and stories of people saying, this solved my problem. Um, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll see how, it, how, how that plays. But then I also want to see how, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of development thinking at Microsoft, you know, as opposed to let's just give a person a tool that they can use and make it work well. And so people are going to have to build stuff on top of this. Mm. And how is how is that process? How does that feel? How quick can you quickly can you generate those things and have them be valuable? I don't have a handle on that yet. Yeah, I think I, I think one of the things I often say is that it's really important to remember just how early we are on this journey, because things like that, like you know, how can we extend? How can we build on top of it? What is that true value? And how how are people re? inventing and reimagining how they work it will take time for that to play out yeah. we don't have all those answers yet yeah and, and as with anything people don't like change yeah change is bad unless yeah. you're doing it to somebody else and and so you know we've got to t- let people take this journey and start you know we had cortana i mean people could have asked that that thing its questions and it obviously didn't really work so is this one going to work is it going to stick yeah, I, I heard a phrase yesterday, Cortana is dead. Long live Cortana. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We named it something else. Corp- Copilot sounds so much better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, brilliant. Well, thank you for joining. That was excellent. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you.